but we we just moved from Silver Lake in Los Angeles to Pasadena. For your viewers, you're not familiar with Pasadena. It's a community east of Los Angeles, based on the mountains. It's known for Art Center College of Design, the famous school, and Jet Propulsion Lab, which is NASA. This is where all the brains in in uh, space exploration live. So it's a very interesting community. It's much more conservative than LA. It's probably, I call it the Switzerland of LA. We are an older community here than LA. People are already mostly retired, so they, they are at a higher risk, but they also know how to live by themselves, which a young city doesn't know how to do that. Because everybody's looking for a date, their hormones are going, and now it's terrible if you are 25 living in, a, in the center of LA, what do you do, you know? It's it's very strange for me because I was telling you before we started recording that <clears throat> the new normal has become my life, which is this outsider who tinkers, does woodwork, photography, motion graphics. And now everybody's living like me. And I find myself maybe not having the answers of how to do it it's it's strange because i'm the one who's supposed to know how to survive but but now that the world is in my model i'm not too sure how to sell that anymore because i'm not a specialty anymore i feel i'm becoming the normal you know so so i'm supposed to be in the cayman islands as we speak in the Caribbean, but obviously all that got canceled. Uh, last summer, a friend of, and, and myself went to the Cayman Islands to uh, photograph endangered plants of the Cayman Islands. Uh, it's not a very interesting place. It's flat, it's small, has a bad reputation in the financial world, but it, it's actually a very interesting place from a uh, survival point of view. The, the highest point is maybe four meters above water. So that's one of the places that will disappear. And because it's the farthest uh, west of the Caribbean islands, Cuba's just north and Jamaica's east of it, it's the last place where Caribbean plants, uh, if they move west, they become American plants, Mexican or American. So it's the last endemic, really uniquely Caribbean, and they have their own subspecies. They're very unique. So the, the National Trust in, uh, in Cayman, along with the Queen Elizabeth uh, Gardens, asked us to go photograph 10 plants. And have we were supposed to have a show at the National Museum in uh, Grand Cayman. It got canceled first, not because of the COVID-19, but they, they big uh, dump, you know, where they put all the trash caught fire. So the museum had to be evacuated and then the disease came along. Uh, so I, we printed all the photos, they're super high res, they're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the concept was to uh, bring the studio to nature as opposed to bringing plants into a studio. We brought, we made a portable studio. We figured out how to light in studio conditions, but in the field. So we, we it took about a day per plant. And some of them are this, most of them are very small. They're like this, right? So we got giant prints. They're gorgeous. We shot, you know, in, uh, in focus stacking. So it's about 60 shots per plant. And then we stacked them all up in post-production to create a gorgeous everything in focus of the plant. So it's quite nice. Uh, another project I was working on, and I was in Beijing which in November, which makes me suspect I might have gotten it over there. And that's why I'm not sick. I was sick when I got back from Beijing. And it's this crazy project uh, developed by... Uh, the EPFL or people from the EPFL in Lausanne, the you know the ETH from Switzerland, and they have a campus in Lausanne, which is the French-speaking version of it. And uh, the scientists there 
went off on their own and developed these uh, printing techniques uh, to put on top of solar panels. So solar, solar panels are ugly pieces of, of engineering or technology, but these people have developed a way of putting super high-end, gorgeous, Swiss quality printing technique onto a solar panel and still retain 90% of its efficiency. So they asked me to shoot again plants because it's the perfect uh, ambassador with not too much uh, politics associated with it. Because wh wh whatever you think, should you be uh, Donald Trump or Greta Thunberg, you like plants, you can't disagree with them. They just are, you know, and it's common to every culture. So it and we were going to China and we didn't want to do politics. That was a no, no. We couldn't tell them how to behave or what they should be doing. So they these these people asked me to shoot some plants. And I, so I took some uh, photos at VDL of uh, the plants at VDL. And we printed them on these uh, triptychs. And we had one at the National Museum in Tiananmen Square and one in uh, an arts district, which I can't really remember the name. You probably know it pretty well. It's called uh, uh, Art District 90 or something like that uh, in Beijing. It's this big military complex that's been turned into a uh, art district. Um, a little bit like the brewery here in, in LA. Um, so we had three, uh, one trip to the museum and one on the street. And that was very successful. The Swiss consulate supported us. Uh, so it was very exciting. And then the disease. <laughs> so all this is irrelevant as, a, as we speak, you know. Uh, three weeks ago, I was... Uh, we had a show by Shio Kusaka at uh, VDL, the ceramicist, Japanese American. And one evening, the mayor declared emergency. And they called me and they said, oh my God, we have to disassemble the show. Can you come and do emergency photography for us? And the orders were, you're not allowed to leave your house, blah, blah. And me as a bad citizen, I went, oh, this is an opportunity for me. I could go be the emergency photographer, you know? So, but I, and I was telling my wife, I said, I don't know if there's going to be roadblocks or people are going to stop me. And she went, no, nah, don't worry about it. It's the US. And sure enough, I got on the freeway. I, nobody stopped me. You know, what was that movie of Jean-Paul Belmondo in the 60s where he goes to Brazil? The man from Rio. That was it. And there's these shots of Brazil, and it looked like, oh my God, this is heaven. It's a perfect modernist dream, it, you know? Where humans, they, they, they're not destroying nature, they're sort of in it because there's not many people. It's, it's amazing, it's a, it's a strange feeling.